Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Brogley and I'd like to give you a brief tour on how to use two tools in Google to be able to grade students work using a rubric. Those two tools are called one, Doctopus, and two, Gubric. So let me give you a brief tour of how to make this happen. First of all, in Google Drive, you'll need to write your assignment, your prompt, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a sample. So you would write your directions on top, and then at the bottom, include your rubric. Now what I like to do is just to have the students start typing on the second page of the paper. That way, they only have to scroll up to be able to get the directions and rubric. So after you do that, then the second step is to make your rubric. Now I know that I had the rubric already on that first sheet. However, Gubric, the tool that grades using a rubric, expects it to be in a Google Sheet document. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm looking for a Google Sheet called Our Community. There it is. Now I had to name mine, I left it our community slash rubric, that way I would remember what it is. And as you can tell, this is exactly the same rubric that I give students on the document. It's nothing more than four rows and columns A through E with the rubric and each criteria or each box has been given some definition. So I have those two pieces, now it's time to go into Google Classroom. So I've already done one as a sample. In Google Classroom, I had started a new assignment. So I clicked on New Assignment, and for this video, I'll just call this Sample. And I gave it a due date, and then in Google Drive, I went to go find that assignment. So I'm going to go look for my community, our community, there it is. Now keep in mind, I'm looking for the Google Doc, not the rubric. So make sure you're assigning the right thing. Again, this is our community, the Google Doc, my assignment for students. And then over on the right here, I need to decide how do I want students to see it. So right now it's set that students can view one file. The second option is students can edit one file. So if you have 30 students, they're all editing the same file. But the third one is what I'm looking for, making a copy for each student. This is probably my favorite part about Classroom is that it can take a Google Doc and dish one out per student. That's great. So then you would click Assign. Now for this video, I'm actually not going to do that because it alerts an email to all of these students in my class. So I'm going to X out of that. Uh, when I do that, it, students get an email telling them I've given them an assignment and they can go ahead and do that. When they open it up on their end, they launch the assignment and complete it right in Google Classroom. Basically, Google Docs will launch and they'll complete it and turn it back in. So here we have, uh, I can tell that one person's completed it and 10 have not. But let's just say I want to check this out and, and grade it for some reason. I'm going to go back over to my drive. The first thing I need to do is launch a blank spreadsheet. So I'm going to go ahead and click New, Google Sheets, and I'm going to rename this quick because I've got so many files under my Drive account. I'm going to call this our community dash dash roster. And click off of that. And then the next thing I'd like to do is I need to go find a particular add-on. So I'm going to click Add-ons, Get Add-ons. And if you don't know, add-ons are made by third parties and they do things, they execute functions or create some kind of convenient feature in a Google product. And uh, Google Docs has its own set of add-ons and Google Sheets has yet another. So in Google Sheets here, I've clicked on Add-ons and then I'm going to search for Doctopus. And here it is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click free. And it's basically now asking if I'm giving permission. So yes, I do want to allow that. I highly recommend that you read any kind of visual tours Google or the third party tool might give you. For example, in this case, Doctopus. They're usually very helpful. So for over on the far right here, uh, I'm going to use it, use Doctopus 
not to distribute drive resources to a roster. I don't need that. That's what classroom's for. But instead, I want to ingest a classroom assignment. So now Doctopus jumped over to Google Classroom and tried to pull out an assignment. So it's asking me, which class? Well, I was just in the sandbox, and that's where I assigned my homework, my community or our community. Now it's asking me which assignment, and I'll pick our community. And now it's bringing in that student data. So it says it's found one file turned in, and eight are not yet. So I'm going to go ahead and just only ingest those that are actually turned in. So I'm going to bring in this assignment now. Now what Doctopus is doing for me, it is producing a wonderful roster. So if I had 20 students in this class and they all had turned it in, it would produce a roster of 20 students. And it gives me a link to each student's work. What I want really is to attach a Gubrick. So step one is building your roster with Doctopus. Step two is using Gubrick to attach a rubric to this whole process, this workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and click Attach Gubrick. After I clicked Attach Gubrick, this pop-up box will appear for you too. It basically says, guess what? Gubrick ramped up and is now a Chrome app to allow students to view attached rubrics and even submit self and peer assessments. So what you need to do is click Reinitialize Gubrick. So now it says, all right, Gubrick has things all set up to allow peer and self-assessments. You can close this tab now. So we'll go ahead and do that. And let's click on Attach Gubrick one more time. You can go ahead and read the yellow box. It's saying Gubrick for Students is a Chrome extension to nudge your students to regularly revisit the rubric and self or peer assess their work. Have them visit, and then there's the link. You can handle that later. For now, let's just attach our own spreadsheet to get this rubric started. So here I'm hovering my mouse right over the correct part. It says click to select a spreadsheet from your drive. So we'll go ahead and click that. And now it will go look into my drive to go get that spreadsheet that I had made just a few moments ago. So I need to remember that it was called our community rubric. I want to make sure, I'm going to flip over to list view instead of grid, so I know I'm clicking on the rubric and not the roster. Here it is, our community rubric. I'll go ahead and click select. So now my rubric has loaded, and I can click attach rubric. Before I do that, let's just check out these quick boxes here. Make a rubric viewable to students. Well, of course, I would want to do that. Do I want to allow peer and self-assessment? Well, for now, because I don't know how that could be a bad thing, I'm going to go ahead and leave it checked. And do I want to send an email notification to students? In my case, I'm going to leave that unchecked because the one student I have in this particular test happens to be a teacher that really doesn't need to be notified. However, if I were using this with students, I would go ahead and leave that checked. Now I'll click Attach Rubric. Now for me, this isn't going to take that long, but if you had a roster of, say, 20, 30 students, it will take a little bit longer to actually go through this. So here's my students' work, and here's the Gubrick link. Once you have your roster built, click on Assess Document for each student. So in this case, it's under the Gubrick link column, Assess Document, and then you would click this script. When you do that, a new tab will open up with the students' work on the bottom, and the rubric on the top. Notice here my rubric had three levels to it. I was grading on ideas, research, and conventions. So to switch from layer to layer, I just need to click on the appropriate tab. So I would go through and read the student's work and leave comments. So I'll go down to the second page, and I can highlight text and leave a comment. Great idea. What else can you say? about your community. Now of course a student would actually write a lot more than this, it was just for demonstration purposes only, but I would go through and leave comments. That narrative feedback for students is so important, but I do need to leave scores here. So I'm going to go over to ideas and say that the writer needs to explain at least two ideas more thoroughly. And research, there was no research made. And for conventions, 
Well, they had one typo, a period and an exclamation point. So I will say the writer has, well, I'm going to say at least two common grammatical mistakes. Um, frankly, it's technically just one grammatical mistake, but I'm not going to give them a three. And I don't believe, let me try a 2.5 to see what happens. Nope, it's not going to happen. So I need to leave it a two. This is a really great example of where my rubric needed to be tweaked a little bit. And I could leave comments back to the student. Great start, but you have a long way to go. See me during study hall for further coaching. And click Submit. And then I can click Next. And from there, it would go on to the next person. Now I'll go back to the roster just to see what's changing and where are my scores going. I noticed a new tab appeared once I attached a Gubric rubric. Um, so I'm going to click on this tab to see what's going on. So here we have rubric scores. Well, check this out. It built a spreadsheet of my students with scores. So I'm going to go back to the top here. There we go. So it, it, it explained who submitted it. Uh, I really just need the scores here. So I've got my ideas, my research conventions, and my comments. So if I wanted to, I can go ahead and make a third column and just summarize this. So I, I like the auto sum feature. So I'm going to highlight these three columns in this single row here, and then click sum, enter. And now my, my spreadsheet's being added for me. And if I had a whole roster of students, I would execute this function for the top row and then hover my mouse over the bottom corner, see where there's this little tiny box, and I've got this plus sign now. I'm going to drag this down however long my roster is and let go, and whichever whatever students are loaded in here, those scores will be tabulated for me. I would definitely do this after I was done grading. So there you have it. That's how to use uh, Google Drive plus Doctopus to make that roster plus Gubric to attach a rubric all within one product. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So check it out. Um, don't be afraid to use your Google Classroom to assign Google Docs and attach rubrics. Have fun.